Uh, my name is Kivari Russell. Went to the University of Notre Dame. I'm from Seattle, Washington. Currently, my profession is an NFL player. Just finished my rookie year with the Cincinnati Bengals. Uh, some hobbies I like, man. I, I write poetry on my free time, whatever that is. I like to just relax in my, you know, dry fit, lounge gear, just relax, <laughs> just chill. And uh, watch TV and enjoy, just enjoy vines. I've been watching football since I was, I think, two or three years old. Like, I mean, my I, little story I always tell people, my grand, my grandmother, like, so you know, football is just, it's seasonal, right? Every, every sport's seasonal, it's not all year long. As a two, three year old, I didn't understand that. So I used to actually watch football. Then when football season was over, I cried. Like, I was wondering, like, why, why football's not on? So I think when I was like four or five, my grandmother actually started recording the game so I could watch it all year long. It was never if I'm going to go, maybe I go. I used to honestly tell people when I make it to the league, that's just how my mindset works. And so, but for me, I wanted to always have an advantage over other people. And I knew, like, I knew everybody's going to be fast in college. I knew everybody was going to be stronger in college. I knew everybody was going to be good in college. I knew everybody was going to be Mr. whatever state they came from, just like I was, Mr. Washington. Got to college. They said I was a running back at, in uh, high school. I got to college at Notre Dame, and they switched me to cornerback. Uh, it was a tough thing. I didn't play much defense in high, school, in high school, but I ended up being the first true freshman to ever start at corner at Notre Dame. I'm not satisfied with putting, putting out bad film. I'm not satisfied with getting bad grades on the test. You know, I'm not satisfied with that. I, that's I always invest in which ways I can get better. That's where my biggest investments go, whether it's even emotionally, physically, financially. I invest with the, the biggest the biggest improvement, that, the, the biggest thing that can improve me as an individual. I grew up with a single mother. Like I said, my mother, like we grew up in poverty. Like I said, we grew up in the uh, Springwood Projects. You know, everybody talking about the projects, the hood. We grew up growing up like a little kid, me, me and my older brother, it's four years older than me. And like, so it was just me, us two and my mother. Like I said, we couldn't never, we couldn't ever get apartments. Like cr credit was bad, you know, couldn't get cars, cars would break down. I mean, everything was just not good growing up. But my mother never, my, my, my mother never made an excuse for that. Like I said, I never had my father in my life. Just never, never, never wanted to be there. That's cool. But my mom never made an excuse for anything. Like said, food on the table, whether it was clothes, anything. We might have, I was able to get 10 different things, but I could get one. That's all I needed. Like I, said, I couldn't get everything I wanted, but I had everything I needed because of my mom. When I go out and play with the kids, I always wanted to be the best. And play whether it's ba backyard baseball, backyard football, tag, no matter what it was, I wanted to be the best. And I was just installed in me. But seeing my mom work hard, my brother was a big influence, an influential person in my life. I said, just seeing, and like I said, my grandfather as well. But just seeing, like, man, like I said, the stuff that my mom went through, like I said, but also seeing the life that I wanted. Like, I hated going through that life, you know? Like, so I'm always one, like, I told myself, I want to be rich. Like, and you know, everybody says that, right? Everybody, I want to be rich. I want to be able to have an endless opportunity of life because that's one thing people don't understand you can be happy not having much i'm not saying that i want to be able to do the live the life that most people dream of but most people won't make the sacrifices for i want to do i want to live that life everybody says we want to be rich but they're not putting the work in everybody says you want to do this but there's not many people that when they realize what it takes to be rich like what people to be rich oh my god like think about bill gates he, 78 billion or whatever it's tough to get to where he didn't trust me you can't do that just sitting on your butt you got to put the work in you got to have long nights you got to do all that so for me, but like, but deep down, it was really like my family. I want to be able to just give the light, give the light to my kids that I never had, and just not even stress on that. Like, not, financial should not be the issue. I want to be able to figure out. I want you to enjoy life. You want to go to vac you want a vacation here? Let's go do that. You want to go to Disneyland? Let's go do that. It's tough when to to do it when life is down. So that's when you really got to test yourself mentally. Don't tell yourself to give up. You got to keep going. Man, it was surreal, but it it was it was surreal. <laughs> It, it did happen, right? Like, you know, I, but it wasn't, oh my God, in shock because I've seen it happening all along. You know what I'm saying? Like, you're, you're only really in shock if you're not expecting something to happen. That's when you, like, the word shock comes to people. Oh my God, I didn't know it. I knew it was going to happen. I told like, I've been telling people, I had people in high school tell me I wouldn't make it. I had to, people in high school tell me, oh, it's only 1%. I knew all the data. I knew all the data. I knew all the facts. I knew all that stuff already. I knew, I've been doing that since I was a little kid. I wasn't never worried about that. But when it happened, man, it's just a different feeling when you're actually in it. It's like, wow. Like, we got to take a, take a step back and just look like, man, like, you know, you're, you're doing this for not even just yourself, your, your future kid. I don't have kids, but for my future kids, for my future wife, for my mother, like, you're just doing this like, man, like, they can watch me on TV now. Like, this is the NFL. Like, we did, we did, we did what I said I was going to do. Uh, I, never, I wouldn't say a true future, but I did have a goal. I was growing up, I said I want to have a poem published by the time I'm 40. So that's still a goal of mine. I'm only 23 right now, so yeah. I, got seven, but I got 17 years left. So we're, I think I had a little time, but I want to make sure uh, the poem, if it, is, if it does get published, I want to be able to make sure everybody can relate to it.